Hi, this is Jason DeWild and I'm the Head of Audio here at the Australian Institute of Music and welcome to part two of our micro lecture on drum replacement. If you haven't seen part one, it's just here. And now we're going to move into part two, which is a little more technical again, fixing up some of those technical problems. Uh, we've already got the drum happening, but now it's time to just put it all in time just to make it sweet. Here we go. Okay, in this video, we're going to just address some of the performance uh, problems and one small technical problem um, that we're going to have a look at as well. So firstly, the, the performance problem. You'll notice that um, with a couple of these, okay, um, we've got some small kicks. That's a small kick here, followed by a much larger one. But when you listen to battery by itself, right, they all come out at pretty much the same. All right, but that's not actually how the kick drum happens. So hear that. All right, especially through here, that's a small one. And all I'll just do just for the argument's sake, it's just my program another one here. So what I'm gonna do is just introduce some performance element into this. So um, on the MIDI track, I'm gonna just expose the velocities here. Now, um, these have all been pretty much created at the same uh, velocity, but what we can do is by varying the velocity of an one, we can actually um, change. All right, we can change, make one some louder and some softer here. Okay, so here's a loud one. Okay, but this one here is a little bit softer, so it's lining up with a softer one here. So I'm just moving the velocities up. Another little good technique for this as well is just to have slight variation. So I'm just actually going to like um, kind of maybe just select all those, and they're the high ones, okay? And um, I'm just going to go up to event event operations change velocity okay so this is going to change the velocity of the ver of the different notes and what i'm going to do is i choose generally choose randomize okay by uh maximum 26 but i'm going to make sure that it's in a range of between 95 and 110 and just apply it and then that just gives us you know a little bit of variation And of course you can do that same thing with the snare. So I'm just gonna go down to the snare track too. Okay, and the snares are all pretty loud, okay, here. So um, again, I'm just gonna like just highlight them all. Okay, go to events, event operations, change the velocity, and uh, I might make it a little bit more. So I'm gonna go between 110 to a maximum of 120 hit apply and these will now make, come out much much louder okay so let's have a listen to that all right okay and we're getting there with that one okay now that's the first problem uh, that we can so we can actually introduce some kind of like performance element to it Okay, now our next problem is, is um, have a listen to this. I'm going to actually just solo the kick drum, the original kick. I'm going to solo battery because that's the thing that's producing the noise. I'm going to solo the MIDI track. Okay, now have a listen closely to this. Okay, again. Okay, now what you might have noticed um, when we've done this is that the trigger for the MIDI note and the trigger for the kick drum itself are not quite in line. In fact, they're a little bit out, okay? What's actually happening is that even though the MIDI note is perfectly in time um, with the actual kick drum itself, this MIDI note is feeding information to battery. Battery then responds and sends audio information back to the track and that takes a little bit of time there's a little bit of processing that's happened and that's actually the thing that's creating the delay so the kick here the midi track and this even though the note is aligned by the time the audio actually comes out there's a small little flam going on you can even hear it um, on the snare drum as well both of them have that have this particular problem now what we need to be able to do is we're going to need to move these MIDI notes 
forward a little bit sort of imagine that they're sort of hanging around here in this in this around this area so that the MIDI note plays a little bit ahead of time so by the time all the processing is comes the actual sound of the of coming out of battery is going to line up with the kick drum okay so that's the, the basic concept now inside Pro Tools under event okay there's something called MIDI track offsets okay all right and this basically gives you a list of all of the MIDI tracks and determines um, you can apply an offset to the whole um, to the whole thing okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to punch in a number of five, minus 550 and I'll explain how um, I roughly got that in a second uh, actually make it minus 565 Okay, it's about right. Okay, and just have a listen now to the difference it makes by just doing that. Okay, so again, battery is soloed, the kick is soloed, and the bat and the MIDI track is soloed. Let's have a listen. Okay, uh, I'll take the event off so you can actually show that again. So go back to zero on this. All right play it all right all right minus five six five clear difference so effectively by putting this offset in we've actually effectively moved the kick replacer track forward by uh, 565 samples which equates to 12.81 milliseconds okay now how did i get this number All right well i'm going to show you how to do that okay so let's just go back to zero for the moment and here is our delay cool okay now we need to somehow measure that delay so this is the way we're going to do it i'm going to go and underneath this battery track I'm going to show you how we actually see how that delay occurs. So I'm going to actually create a stereo audio track. Okay. I'm going to feed the output of battery. I'm going to feed that into buses three and four. Okay. I just make sure. And I'm going to make the input of this audio track buses three and four. And I'm just going to make the output of the audio track just go to my um, normal output here. Okay, cool. So now I'm just going to record. So basically battery is now feeding this audio track. I'm going to pop that audio track into record at the moment. And I'm just going to record this little bit of section just through here. Okay, so. All right. So the output of battery is now feeding into this audio track and I've just recorded battery at this point. OK, so we can clearly see that this is um, the, the battery thing. So now I'm uh, just going to reset all that to make the output of battery go back to my normal output. And let's have a look at this particular audio region that we've created. OK. All right. So if you look closely, here is the MIDI track that's triggered battery. Right, but when batteries produce the sound, it's actually come and into this audio track a little bit later. Okay, so this is the delay that's been created. Okay, of that much, right? Or actually, it's probably closer to about that much. There, there is the delay. So this is where the kick should be. This is where battery's putting it. All right, even though the MIDI note's perfectly in space. So this is our delay. Now, if I go up here, the delay is around. Uh, if you could zoom my right in, okay, so just make it here. Okay, so that's about where it should be, roughly there. So it's 11 milliseconds, you know, 12 milliseconds, something around that. You might just need to play it a little bit. It's actually going to pretty close to kind of 12 milliseconds here. All right. Okay, and you can see that it'll actually, maybe this one's a short one, so maybe even just double check it on another one, but it should be the same. 
So here's where much stronger kick, here is where the thing comes in, and again it's about 11 milliseconds. So effectively we're seeing an 11 or 12 millisecond delay between when the real kick happens and when the battery actually provides it. So that's the delay that we actually now got to set. So I'm now, now that I know it's about 11 milliseconds, okay, All right. I'm now going to delete that track don't need that anymore but just remember uh, 11 milliseconds okay now we go back to our event MIDI track offsets so what would be great is under the kick replacer we could just m enter in 11 milliseconds here as the offset unfortunately can't click that right? I'm double clicking and it doesn't work so I'm not sure why that is uh, but here is what so basically we have to try and convert samples to milliseconds so it's a little bit of playing around you can actually probably potentially work it out but I'm just going to go and do say at minus 500 now I've made it a minus key because that will now actually bring the um, MIDI track forward by 500 samples if I was to just make it five plus 500 it would actually move the MIDI track backwards by 500 samples so I'm going to make it 500 okay and I've noticed that that's actually point um, minus 11.34 milliseconds okay so I might just make it maybe minus 495 so we don't want it to go back as far there's minus 22 maybe make it so we're going to try and get to minus uh, 490, okay, 11.11, minus 485, okay, there you are, minus 485 is exactly 11 milliseconds here, cool, all right, so now, because that was the delay that we'd worked out, so now the kick is perfectly on time so basically this track is this particular midi um, uh, clip and this whole midi track has been played ahead by 11 milliseconds and by the time the sound comes out they're perfectly in phase now i'm going to actually because the snare is also going to the same instruments going to battery i'm actually going to make the snare offset the same amount so double click minus Four eight five. Okay, so now both the kick and the snare have been been moved forward by eleven milliseconds, and that should make everything nicely in time. Okay, so um, this has the advantage of being able to. Um, this method is a little, I know it's a, a little long and long in the tooth, but what it does is it has the advantage of giving you ultimate playback um, capabilities because you're using MIDI, okay, to actually make this all work. Um, you can choose here, I mean, we've chosen like anything, but I can actually, you know, replace, make it any sound I want. I can send MIDI information to a synth. I can feed it to multiple tracks. So you've got an enormous amount of flexibility if you actually use MIDI notes instead of a dedicated drum program. Um, this could be a synth bass it could be you know uh, you know a synthesized snare track you know all sorts of different things so um, I feel that this kind of gives you the, the sort of the most flexibility by using velocity you're going to get various performance um, sort of variations to it um, and overall gives you a, bit, a much more sort of a realistic drum replacement I think without relying on uh, a program to do it for you so hopefully you've en enjoyed the sort of drum replacement lessons and uh, it's been great uh, doing this and uh, good luck with all your endeavors stay tuned so I hope you enjoyed that two-part micro lecture series on drum replacement don't forget to subscribe to AIM TV Sydney and more micro lectures coming your way real soon thanks again